Thank you, Kevin. Good morning, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here with all of you. Uh, I appreciate you coming today. Uh, this is a listening opportunity for us, and we're uh, very glad to have your input. I wanted to spend just a little bit of time this morning. Uh, I, like Kevin, uh, am having a difficult time with uh, the uh, pace of emails and phone calls coming in and get back to you as uh, time permits. Uh, I am looking at all those and paying attention to your thoughts, and I appreciate each and every one of those. I wanted to spend a little bit of time and talk about the budget, why we did what we've done so far this session, the uh, condition of the budget when we came in uh, starting in January. Uh, the general fund budget had been estimated by the Revenue Estimating Conference at $7.3523 billion. But by December, we had dropped that to $7.2119 billion, leaving us $110.8 million in shortfall. When you add in the Medicaid supplemental uh, estimate, that shortfall then became $118 million in the state budget. And by law, we were obligated to deal with it. Now what's happened in the past was a straight across the board cut to every entity without concern for the ramifications of those. And that's one of the reasons I ran for office was because of what happened with a 10% across the board school cut devastated our schools. It led to a 30% property tax increase in four years and it was totally unacceptable to manage the state that way. And so that is why uh, we took the thoughtful process to go through the budget and make the adjustments that we did. I've got those itemized if people are interested, but it'll take some time to go through it. I think in the, in the sense of brevity, I'll just tell you that uh, we, we did uh, uh, fund transfers for $25 million. We did non-budget adjustments left to the Department of Management for $11.5 million. The budget that I am responsible for, the administration and regulation, was a $1.9 million cut. Ag Natural Resources, $1.7 million cut. Economic Development, $1.4 million. Education, $26 million. And I want to stop there for a minute. The reason it's that size compared to the others is because the overall size of education budgeting. And we did leave K-12 education completely out of that cut. We felt that was very important. And, and it's the most important issue here in Ankeny. Health and Human Services, $38.5 million. The Justice Systems, $10.7 million. And the legislature, we cut our time from 110 days that we get paid this year to 100, 100 days. So we participated in that. And it's not for the money, folks. We did, it, we did it out of respect for what we're trying to do here and keep the process moving along quickly. So where does that leave us for 2018? So the, de the December Revenue Estimating Conference is what we base the, the fiscal year 2018 budget on, and that's what we'll be appropriating during this session. They're estimating right now 7.556 three billion dollars and when you subtract out the 2017 budget estimate of seven billion two hundred eleven million nine hundred thousand the difference is three hundred and forty four thousand four hundred dollars three hundred forty four million four hundred thousand is the new money that we have to work with that's estimated today but by law I will code 8.54 limits the legislature to 99% spending of the December Revenue Estimating Conference, and that drops it to uh, 7.4807 billion. And when we did the department transfers of 25.2, we have to carry that forward into fiscal year 18, and we subtract out the uh, 2017 budget. The agreed to additional revenue between the House, the Senate, and the Governor is $200.9 million of new money that we have to appropriate. So what will happen with that $200.9 million is very important. The 
first thing that we did was supplemental state aid for schools and we appropriated $40 million of that $200 million. Medicaid received $42 million. The Technology Reinvestment Fund received $17.5 million. Increased contribution to the Peace Officer Retirement System, or POORS, was $2.5 million. Increased drug costs at the state prison, $2.2 million. Annual adjustment to the Homestead and Elderly and Disabled Tax Credit, $1.7 million. And an increased usage of National Guard Education Assistance Program was $3 million. And filling the state reserves to the statutory levels, an additional $20.4 million. Between those, $120 million has already been obligated out of the $200.9 million. And so what are the priorities for the remaining $80 million? And that's assuming that it comes in. The Revenue Estimating Conference has been lowering their estimates every quarter for over the last year. We have to provide additional state troopers. We have to address water quality. We have school funding inequities across the state of Iowa from transportation issues uh, to classroom sizes to all kinds of issues, rural schools versus uh, urban schools. We've got a lot of issues there. Additional funding for DHS programs and funding for operations in the Department of Corrections, the Department of Public Safety, and the Judicial Branch. So we've got a lot on our plate to deal with, and that's why it's important that you speak up and that we hear from you. Uh, but we have about $80 million left to appropriate. I'll shift gears a little bit. A lot of times I work with uh, budget issues, but it's important to uh, also consider the issues, the policy issues. We have House Study Bill 92 that I'm involved with. I've been asked to uh, chair this bill. And uh, this will establish a minimum wage or other employment benefits across the state of Iowa in one uniform uh, law. And the reason that we're doing that is so that businesses can operate with the assurance that when they come to Iowa, when they open uh, multi-county, maybe they're part of multi-state operations, that they can run their business seamlessly and that people in Iowa are treated the same across the state. We think that's a basic fundamental part of Iowa and we think that that part that there's been five counties that have, and Polk is one of them, that have uh, taken the move, the steps to uh, set their own minimum wage, we are declaring that that was not right, that the state of Iowa has that right. And folks, it has nothing to do with setting a minimum wage, it just simply says the state will do that. <laughs> and that is our job. Right. Hey guys, gals, and everybody here, this is not a debate. And we are going to get two people, and everybody's going to, we're going to get we as many as we can. To. I understand. But we also don't need to have people yelling back. Just let him finish, and then we'll allow people to talk. That's all we ask, and I think that's, that's reasonable. Go ahead. Soon. Okay, so anyway, that's, that's what I have to say about that, Bill. Uh, be happy to uh, take questions. I'm sure we'll have some.